Oh, go ahead. Oh, hey, thanks for taking time as always. So I know I asked you about Jamison Hanna uh, a couple days ago and had a home run yesterday. I know he's made some good plays out there. How does he need to continue to kind of impress and prove these last couple of weeks of spring in order to get ready for the minor league season? Well, I think just continue on what he's doing, showing us uh, what he can do. I think that uh, the thing with Jamison <clears throat> is he's got to keep developing as a player. I think it's great that he's in big league camp with us, uh, that he gets to work with with our coaching staff and uh, rub shoulders with Charlie Blackman, Trevor Story, uh, you know, great players, and and uh, and know what you know our expectations are of him and and his own personal goals. And he's he's doing very well. Uh, I'm happy for him. He's got uh, he's got some energy to his game. Uh, he, I think there's a toughness to this kid. Um, you know, we're looking forward to watching him develop. But that was a good swing yesterday. Showed a little pull power like we talked about. Uh, he's made some nice plays in the outfield. So he's progressing. So it's really, really good to see, uh, you know, some of the some of his skill sets show up here in exhibition games. So do you see him strictly as a center fielder or play the corners as well? Or? I think, we'll, you know, we'll move him around for sure to make sure the versatility is there where he feels comfortable everywhere. So... Uh, we'll move him around, but I think he could be a uh, you know all field outfielder. Offensively, wh where does he need to improve, improve the most? Uh, just like a typical young hitter in his approach and discipline. Or? Yeah, a little bit of everything. I think that uh, again, I think that you know he can become a little pull conscious. Uh, he's got to be able to take the ball the other way a little bit, use the whole field. I think that's uh, you know something we got to keep an eye on. But again, more consistent bat to ball skills. You know, the on-base component, cut the strikeouts down, all the things you look for uh, in player development from the offensive side. And one final thing for me, uh, Yancy Almonte, what's been your impressions of him just so far this camp as he's, you know, working to continue to build himself? And obviously he's going to be a big part of your bullpen. Yeah, so far so good with Yancy. The, arms, uh, the arm is solid. The stuff is good. Uh, it's coming out uh, as expected as far as velocity and action to his breaking ball. Again, just consistency with uh, with everything as he moves uh, through this spring and then into the season. I think last year in a in a small sample size, uh, he and Bard were you know our our two best and most reliable relievers. Uh, you know his challenge is to be able to do that through 162 games as a you know as a big league reliever and hopefully anywhere from you know 55 to 70 relief appearances uh, and put up statistically good numbers. Uh, I think with the NC again, it comes down to. You know, strike throwing ability. Uh, he's going to get his strikeouts because he has stuff. Minimize the walk. Uh, he has good stuff, so I think the hit rate will be fine. And again, just you know, working his way through uh, an inning or a couple innings, whatever uh, is asked of him, and and to perform. But I think things are lined up now. He's got experience. Uh, he should be over all the the things that young pitchers uh, have to go through. Uh, we're looking for a big year, a big consistent year from Yancey. Buddy. Yep. Big Rook. Yeah, hey buddy, without minor league camp, uh how how is the rest of the way gonna work? Are there gonna be any cuts or are you can you even reassign somebody? I don't yeah, know. I, I yeah, it's it's gonna be a little different for sure. Uh yeah, there isn't a, a true minor league camp where guys can, you know, get sent down and you know continue their work and play minor league exhibition games. Uh, a lot of it will be in administrative type uh moves. Uh, you know, paperwork type moves where you know we we start to get the uh, the administrative size uh, the administrative roster size down per se. Uh, there's a lot of times we might you know uh, you know tell a guy that uh, on paper he's going to the minor leagues, but he'll stay in the same locker in the big league clubhouse. So it's going to be unique. It's going to be a little different. Gotcha. Um, and a, a couple questions on Kyle Freeland. Uh, He's really had, I guess now, just within the last year, three camps, basically, including this one, the spring, summer camp, and then another spring camp this year. Okay. Uh, did, did, uh, you know, did he look different between this, the, the last spring camp and then the summer camp? Did it, did it look like he had made progress on his own? I mean, you were, at that point, we were still waiting to see how he would sort of rebound from a down. Camp. Right. Well, a, a thing, the thing that, you know, the last part of 19, I think we started to see that uh, development with Kyle. I think we saw the changeup come into play in the last part of the 19 season. 
in September. Even remember, he got banged up with. Uh, I think he had a growing pull, and uh, you know, he he and Marquez and and John remember at the end of eighteen, at the end of nineteen, uh, you know, we 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 shut Marquez down, and then John was down with the broken foot, and then Kyle had a, a leg injury. So, you know, our top three starters there in nineteen, you know, really didn't pitch you know, the last six or seven weeks of the season. Kyle made some sporadic starts, you remember, pitched a couple innings at a, at a time, and then we got him out of there just due to pitch count. So, you know, that hurt us a little bit in 19 as far as our record was. Uh, but with Kyle, you started to see that development uh, with the changeup and, and us, uh, meaning uh, the pitching coaches, Kyle, myself, start talking about the curveball, uh, the changing of speeds, uh, you know, the development of other weapons. So that off season between 19 and 20 was a was a big part uh, of Kyle's development going into last season. So he came to spring training, you know, with the with the goal to improve the the curveball to have that curveball be in the you know the high 70s, right around 80 miles an hour. Uh, more more use of the changeup, uh, you know, continue uh, you know working on fastball command and. And the consistency of his of his cutter slider. So, uh, and then we got shut down. Uh, that development continued uh, during the shutdown and into summer camp. Then we saw Kyle last year throw the ball very well with a lot of uh, variance in his velocities, uh, the mix of the four pitches, and then boom, the season's over. Uh, but uh, Kyle showed that last year. Uh, ground ball rate was great. Uh, change up usage up. Uh, a great deal. Uh, you can, you guys can look, all look that up. But it became a very different style than what Kyle threw in, in really 17, 18, and and 19. So uh, a lot of a lot of growth there. So this off season, more of the same. Just continued, uh, you know, to develop uh, the change. Feel confident in it. Uh, more education on uh, on how his ball spins. Uh, you know some of the Trackman Rapsodo stuff that uh, the data that Kyle could uh, glean some information from uh, all all went into play this off season. So uh, you know this year I think we're, we're I mean in a nutshell you're just seeing a lot of growth in a pitcher uh, and not becoming uh, you know just one dimensional or uh, you know just staying you know staying in one lane. You know he's varied. Uh, his repertoire and his pitch ability. Uh, you know, I know you connect with pitchers each individually for their own ways, but um, and and I've never seen, <laughs> I never saw you pitch live. I've seen some clips, um, but do you do you feel like he looks like you? Does he pitch like uh, you? You know, not really. I mean, different, thing? different. Yeah, we're just left-handed. Uh, different styles for uh, for sure. I mean, Kyle. Uh, you know, Kyle had a you know has a really good moving fastball. My fastball was pretty straight. You know, I threw a, a you know more of a a bigger curveball. You know, a big twelve to six break. You know, in the low seventies. Uh, you know, Kyle doesn't have doesn't use that pitch. So different styles, but uh, you know, I, you know I can draw some comparisons on you know the maybe the competitiveness and the and how. Uh, you know, maybe some of the emotion on the sleeve type stuff that, that Kyle shows that was in there with me. But uh, I really like the way he pitches. And I, I mean, I, I, I enjoy every day that uh, I get to see our starters pitch because I, I like how they're built and how they're wired. And uh, I know these guys. But uh, when Kyle pitches, it, I really like that day. I really, really like when Kyle th pitches. I hate to pigeonhole you lefties, but yeah. Thank you. Well, you got it. I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, buddy, before I ask my question, I wanted to go back to something, uh, follow up on something that you were saying to Nick. You said about the curveball that Kyle doesn't, first you said he doesn't have it, you said he doesn't use that pitch. Can that pitch Hang on a minute. What'd I say? You said, at first you said Kyle doesn't have that pitch, the curveball. No, well, no, he doesn't have the curveball type that I threw. Okay. I had the bigger, uh, the bigger uh, Barry Zito. Right. Uh, you know, the bigger, bigger looping breaking ball. Kyle does not have that type of curveball. He has his curveball. He has right. a curveball. And it's his. I was, 
Yeah. Okay. I was wondering if they could work yours into it, or you feel no, like and every no, did, he couldn't. Okay. He no, it uh, no, his curveball is his curveball. Okay. Um, saw Chad Smith yesterday strike out three guys, and he was a guy that ended up at the um, alternate site last year. Yep. What do you know about him? I mean, I've I've seen the history where good stuff hasn't always been in the strike zone, but. Um, just from watching him in bullpens and also watching him out there yesterday, it looks like he has something. Yeah, he, you know, he's a guy that our scouts have liked, even going back to the amateur draft. Uh, you know, we have a catalog of information on all pitchers uh, throughout the game, uh, all organizations. Uh, you know, we have scouting reports on all players. And, you know, even our own amateur scouts, you know, we can pull up old reports on, on pitchers. Uh, Chad went to Ole Miss. Uh, you know, so our amateur scout saw him. He was just picked by the Marlins. Uh, so, uh, again, he comes with, uh, you know, a scouting report resume of a, a good moving, sinking fastball with velocity. I think the velocity has improved over the last couple seasons. Uh, the slider's been a little bit of a work in progress. That's something that, uh, you know, he's working hard to improve. But it's a nice mix of, uh, you know, some fastball velocity with movement. Uh, and a, hopefully a developing slider and a, and a feel for a change. So it's, you know, it's quality major league stuff. Now it's just a matter of, you know, getting in good spots and throwing strikes, keeping the ball down, uh, making pitches, uh, executing pitches in the right, at the, in the right times. So uh, again, it's, it's, uh, it's a guy based on yesterday's performance that, uh, you know, sort of opened our eyes a little bit. You know, first time we really have seen him live and, you know, competition per se. We saw him in alternate camp and inter-squad games, but uh, that was nice to see yesterday. Yeah, a guy like that, I mean, uh, and especially with the college experience and everything else, I mean, do you look at him as being a guy on your radar even to make the team now or more of a... Uh, you know, a yeah, more? yeah, probably probably needs a little bit more... Uh, you know, more time with us and, you know, more, uh, you know, more game action to really see what we got here. Okay. Um, also, some of the younger guys you're seeing, I asked you about Belayed a little bit yesterday, but wh what are you seeing from him in the box, um, in the batter's box right now? Good. Uh, I think a good at bat for a younger player, uh, you know, is on the fastball, which we love. You know, he can get to any fastball velocity. Uh, he's got bat speed. There's strength to the swing, uh, and he's got some. I think he's got some uh, some barrel ability too. Uh, we've seen him use the whole field. Uh, we've seen him cut down with two strikes to put the ball in play. Uh, you know, overall, it's a it's a good approach with some strength to it. And I think there's some confidence in there too. Uh, he's uh, you know he's exciting. Uh, this guy, I'm 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 looking really forward to watching his progress uh, this season and. And moving forward, uh, you know, we might have something on our hands here with this guy. And when you look at um, him playing the outfield, looks like he's adapted to that, but um, has played third base, looks like he can play some first. Where do you see him positional? Well, right now, I mean, we're looking at the outfield, looking at left field. I think he's made that transition from the infield to the outfield, and he's becoming more and more comfortable. So, uh, again, here's a guy that was, you know, a high school shortstop. Uh, he's played third and short in the minor leagues. I think uh, we felt as though the best position would probably be left field. That's why he's out there now, getting as many reps as possible. He's becoming more comfortable. But I think because of his past uh, and some athleticism as being a, an infielder, uh, potentially he can move uh, again. But let's just keep it in left field for now. Okay, thanks, buddy. You got it. I will finish up with Drew Creaseman. Drew, go ahead. Good morning, buddy. Hi, Drew. Hi, Drew. Ryan, I'll top you questions for you. Um, first of all, just with regards to the, the kind of dynamic of his balance and his contact, right? He struck out more at the major leagues than he ever did in the minors. He's been trying to add power over the last couple of years. Sometimes we see it, sometimes we don't. Is power something that needs to be added to his game for him to be the best player he can be? Or after last year where we saw yeah. him hit 320 and do those kinds of things, can he be successful just being a contact guy? Well, a couple things. Let's uh, the strikeout rate uh, is going to happen because big league pitchers are better than minor league pitchers. They have better stuff, so uh, you're probably that 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 initially that strikeout rate uh, will probably increase. Now, uh, 
Now, once you get to the big leagues and you and you have enough at bats versus big league pitchers, now that that strikeout rate should decrease. So uh, that's what, uh, in regards to the strikeout rate, we're hoping with TAP that you know the strikeouts uh, lessen, the walks increase. Uh, as far as the power, I think there's power in there. I think we've seen Rommel uh, not so much last year, but previous years. Uh, have a swing uh, get a little big trying to produce a little bit more power and it, it works against him I think uh, you know the best Tapia uh, for us is one who uh, tries to be a hit collector get his hits uh, he I think the the home run will show up in his game on on certain pitches uh, we saw it the other day he had an opposite field home run on a, on a fastball up and away from him he, he has he has some power uh, even though it's a it's a you know, it's a lean, uh, life-type body. It's, there's some strength in there. So it, it will it will come. I think there's power in there. Uh, but he should not try to hit home runs. He should try to collect hits. Uh, if he gets his hits, barrels up the ball, and at certain swings uh, he elevates it, there's enough power in there to get it. But he should not try to hit for homers. He should try to hit for average, uh, to have an on-base component, and I think the slugging percentage will uh, be there eventually. And la last one for you. Are you still like him as that leadoff option? I know once you moved him there last year, oh, I think over 90% of the games he played from the leadoff. Yeah, I, you know, he has history there. He's comfortable there. Uh, he wants to be there. He wants to produce in that spot. And I think uh, for us, uh, you know, he's a guy that identifies uh, to being able to handle that. But it's going to be performance based. We need him to get on base. You know, last year he did a really good job once he got in there on a regular basis. You know, the on base was up there around 380, 390 for a lot of the, a lot of the shortened season, uh, sort of decreased there at the end. Uh, I think that he came out of his game a little bit trying to get more hits, and it, it worked against him. So, uh, again, I think he would be able to fulfill that role if he plays like uh, Ramel Tapia can play. Hit collector. I like that. Thanks, okay. Buddy. All right, guys. Thanks.